Here in Studio One, I've got a vocal track which we can see in blue here. And in between the phrases, we can see some fairly big gaps. Now, you may want to get rid of those gaps for all kinds of reasons. Perhaps there's some background noise you want to get rid of, like aircon or something. Or maybe you want to have separate clips so that you can process them separately. For example, you may want to actually apply Melodyne to some and not others okay now we can easily do that in studio one but before we do i just want to have a quick listen to a couple of these phrases was it the touch of my hand was it the way that i stand too close Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the audio menu right at the top here, and then the third selection here is Strip Silence. I'll just click on that, and hey presto, it's done, right? Let's just have a quick listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Sounds perfect, so end of tutorial, right? Well. Not quite. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now you may have gone up to that menu as I did there, the audio menu, and clicked on strip silence like I'm gonna do now and got a really different result. Let's have a listen this time. Was it the touch of my hand? Oh. Was it the way that I said? Not what I was looking for at all. Now the reasons for that is, is that this option in the menu simply applies the most recent settings which have been used in the real strip silence feature. Now that feature can be found on the toolbar at the top here. Just click on this little icon here and the options for strip silence will be revealed. So what does all of this mean? So as well as this strip silence feature being available in our main view here, it's also available in in the edit view. I'm gonna to get to that right now by double clicking on my vocal event here, yeah? And it brings up this edit view, which I've got set to full screen. And you can see that the strip silence uh, options are available there already, they're already open. I'm just gonna use this view because it's much easier for you to see what's going on for the rest of the video. I'm also going to solo this vocal so that we can much more clearly hear what's happening at the beginning and the end of these clips as we make them. Now as a quick overview of the options here we have two basic sections. On the left hand side we have the detection options and then on the right hand side we have the events options. Now in the detections options we've got this material menu here with a few different selections. I like to call these presets okay. Now the first three yeah we've got lots of silence, we've got little silence, we've got noise floor for example do not allow you to adjust uh, these two settings in the detection area being open threshold and closed threshold. You can only adjust those once you have manual selected okay. Now I'm going to actually come back to these two options later towards the end of the video. I'd like to start off by dealing with the events uh, features on the right hand side. So I'm just actually going to set this, this preset here to lots of silence at the moment and we will go ahead and start to explore the events event section. So I've actually zeroed all of the settings here so that we can uh, use all of the controls to fix the initial results that we're going to get. If I apply uh, the settings at the moment, all these zeroed settings, we get this. Lots of little tiny clips which sound really abrupt, just as we did before, yeah? Was it the touch of my no good at all. So one of the first problems we have here is the, the length of these events or clips as I often call them, okay? They're just way too small. And a really simple fix for that is to adjust this setting, the minimum length. Now I'm just gonna push this all the way up to th uh, 0 0.3 seconds, for example, should be uh, around about okay. Now I'm gonna press Control Z or Command Z on the keyboard to undo. There'll be a lot of that happening, okay? And then I'm gonna apply this new setting. Okay, so right away we can see we've got a much more satisfactory result in that we haven't got these tiny little clips. Let's have a listen though. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? 
So you can hear there, we're getting there, but there's these very abrupt and obvious openings and closings to the sound of these phrases here, okay? So one of the ways that we can fix that or begin to fix that is by using the pre and post roll features. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna look at the point where it wants the, the clip to start and then just create a little buffer at the beginning and the end. And we set this in time. Now a good setting to start off with for pre-roll and post-roll, I reckon is 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, so we'll do that for both of those, yep. And we will undo, and we'll click on apply again. And now you can actually see, or the eagle-eyed amongst you will be able to see, there's a little gap now. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? getting there isn't it but not kind of perfect at all now so one of the other features that we've got available is this fade in fade out feature that creates a just nice smooth um, volume ramp at the beginning and end of each clip okay i'm going to set these about the same as the pre and post roll 0.1 okay and 0.1 and then i'm going to undo and apply again and you can see there's this little fade in at the beginning and end. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? Too close. Much, much better. We're not quite there yet. I'll explain uh, why I think we're not quite there in a moment. But first of all, I just want to point out that with these pre and post roll and fade in and fade out features, we can actually link them with this link button. The reason for that is it's often the case that you'll want those fade lengths to be uh, the same or similar length to your pre and post roll lengths. Okay, so that's a very handy feature so you don't have to adjust all of those every single time so I've linked them there we're actually going to get the same result so I won't demonstrate it now if I undo this I just want to point out a couple of things in the original in the original audio have a look here at these really sort of uh, low volume bits of audio here they're actually really important I'll play this section and have a listen was it the way that I stand too close yeah, so we've got, you know, the D at the end of stand and the S at the end of close there, which are finishing off the words. And with our current settings, if I apply them, yeah, it, it's we're not getting those abrupt beginnings and ends, but we're actually cutting out those two little low volume uh, parts of the vocal there. And they're really important. If we listen to that section. Was it the way that I stand too close? <laughs> sounds like too clow, okay, so the word isn't being finished. And that is where the detection section comes in. <laughs> so the detection section has two main options, open threshold and close threshold. But as you can see here, they are grayed out and unavailable to me. And that's because I need to make sure that I select the manual selection from this materials dropdown, okay, then they're available to me. Now I want you to think about these open and close settings as gate settings okay not just like a, a gate plugin but perhaps as a real world gate when we open the gate things can come through in this case sound when we close the gate then things can no longer pass through so we are opening and closing in this case the beginning and the ending of our events or clips as I often mistakenly call them okay now one other thing I want to point out is we can actually link the the open and close settings here so that they are the same and the vast majority of the time I find that that's absolutely fine there may be cases where you need to set them differently it depends on the material you're using but I'm just going to link them so they're the same in this case now if we were to set this to zero decibels like I've done now what we're saying is don't let anything through or don't open the gate until uh, the audio reaches 
zero decibels and hopefully not much of your audio does reach zero decibels that's loud in audio in the audio world terms so but let's apply this setting we'll see what happens okay it just gets rid of everything so that's no good to us we'll undo that likewise if we set this to the absolute lowest setting which is minus 80 decibels and we apply that then too much has come through here I do have some very very low level stuff obviously in here but I've also got some get um, some sort of silent material which I don't want there at the moment so I'll undo that now rather than pretend to you I'm actually some kind of magician <laughs> I will admit that I did some experimentation before I recorded this uh, little section and I found that around about minus 30 dB for this material works we'll apply it in a moment but i do want to emphasize for this material this is going to change depending on your material and the volume or the level of those little uh, little bits of detail that you want to allow through but i've set this to minus 30 db now i'll apply it and as you can see we've got rid of most of the gaps in the performance but we've kept those little details in. If we play this little phrase here. Was it the way that I stand too close? We can hear that she is now finishing the words. Now, of course, I've been working with vocals here, but you could use this with any instrument or any kind of track. But if you do happen to be working with vocals at the moment and you're kind of new to it, you may want to check out this video here where I walk through the basics of how I process vocals in Studio One. Thank you.